I've made no secret of the fact that YouTube videos are one of the main things that turned my business into the success that it is today. They're how my target customers found me, how I grew my audience to over half a million followers, and how I continue to attract and develop leads. My story and experience has inspired thousands of entrepreneurs to try their own hand at video marketing, and many have gotten even better results than I have. But for every one person who succeeds at video marketing, there are at least nine others who try but give up before they see any real result. Why is this? Well, one of the number one reasons I've heard from my audience is that they're uncomfortable on camera. If that's you, then we really need to fix that problem. Being uncomfortable on camera will make your videos less enjoyable for your audience to watch and definitely means you're less likely to stick with it long term. In today's episode, I'm sharing 15 easy ways to quickly improve your presentation skills so that you can show up confident on camera and make awesome videos. If you're ready to start using the power of video marketing to grow your business without any discomfort, then keep on listening. This first tip is going to sound really counterintuitive, but hear me out. It's that you need to outline your videos, not script them. When you script your videos, your script becomes a crutch and you come to rely on it. It's really difficult to sound natural when you're speaking from a script, so you sound awkward at first. And you keep on sounding awkward because you never learn how to speak confidently and naturally on camera. So just write a simple bullet point outline for your videos and then speak off the cuff from that. Tip number two is to keep it simple and don't try to cover too much. When you have too many notes and you try to cover too much material, you'll end up feeling flustered, you won't be able to dive deeply into any one point, and your presentation overall is going to feel rushed and not that professional. And that leads to tip number three, which is to master your material. If you want to speak really confidently, then you need to know what you're talking about. There are two ways that you can do that. First, talk about stuff that you actually know about. Don't try to give a presentation about a topic that you've only done some brief research on. And second, whatever your presentation is about, you're going to want to practice that presentation. Now, if you are just making a YouTube video, then you might not need to practice the whole video before you film it. You can say it one line at a time, and if you don't quite like the way that one line comes out, you can always just repeat that line until you get it right. But if you are going to be presenting live and you aren't going to be edited later on, maybe you're speaking on a stage or maybe you're speaking at a virtual event, then you will want to practice the entire presentation. I used to make the mistake of thinking that I knew what I was talking about and I had my notes so I didn't need to practice. But after an experience where I was giving a live presentation at a conference in Mexico where I accidentally was forced to practice my presentation because the people who were putting on the event wanted to see a demo, during my initial practice, I stumbled all over the place and I decided to rework much of my presentation. So I reworked my presentation and I did another practice. I sent that version to the people who were putting on the event and I was happy that I had been forced to practice because by the time I gave the presentation on the stage and it was the third time, the presentation was far more polished than the first time that I'd tried to wing it. I thought I could wing it because I was used to YouTube videos and I can normally wing YouTube videos, but if you're gonna speak live, make sure you practice, practice, practice. Tip four for being confident on camera is to know exactly one person who you are talking to. Now, for this tip, I'm not talking about imagining that you're just talking to one person. I'm talking about knowing exactly who your message is for. Have an audience in mind, an audience of one specific type of person. Maybe this is someone you know in real life, maybe it's someone you've interacted with online, or maybe it's an imaginary person who you are imagining sitting in the audience. But when you focus on one person who you are speaking to, then you will be able to relate to that person and use examples examples that will make sense to that person and share information that will be interesting to that person. My next tip is to visualize that person. And that's where we come to the often heard advice to imagine that you're just speaking to one person or that your audience is just one person. So here we are trying to take a little bit of the intimidation factor away. And instead of feeling like we are addressing a crowd, we want to just imagine that one person in front of us who we are talking to. Not only can that make things a bit less scary, 
but it also means that you will be able to come off a lot more conversationally, and that will be more friendly for your audience to listen to. The next tip is for people who primarily talk to a camera, like YouTubers. You need to make sure that you are looking your audience in the eye. And if you're talking to a camera, then the way that you do that is you look straight into the middle of the lens. I know it's super tempting to look into the viewfinder on the side of your camera, or even to kind of stare off at the wall because there's no one here to make eye contact with. But you need to pretend like that lens is the eye of your audience because Really, it is. You need to look straight into it because it'll make your audience, your viewers, feel much more connected to you. They're going to trust you more. They are going to feel a lot more comfortable watching your video, which will make them a lot more likely to keep watching your video for longer and to enjoy the video more overall. Next is something that sounds like it would be so easy, but I find that it can be tough when you get into presenter mode, whether you're making a video or speaking on a stage. And that is talking like a human. A lot of us get into a weird robot mode, whether it's because we are reading from a script or just because it's a little bit awkward to talk to a camera and not a real person. But I want you to think of that one person who you're talking to and really picture them and imagine that you are talking to them like you would talk to a friend. Try to sound as natural and conversational as you can and don't try to be too, too perfectly perfect. It's okay to say um a little bit, say um, uh, maybe stutter, maybe pause to think for a moment. Of course, if you have longer pauses or you really mess up what you're saying, then you'll want to probably stop and repeat yourself and maybe edit out the mistake because you don't want there to be too much boring in your video. But there's a difference between boring and natural. Natural is good, boring is not. Once you've gotten comfortable talking like a human, then it's pretty easy to move on to the next step, which is to be confident on camera. And here's one really good reason why you can be confident. Your presentation is going to be edited, at least if you're making a video. So if you are making a video, then don't worry about messing up because you can always edit it later. You can always refilm the entire video. And as you're making the video, of course, you can always just stop and repeat yourself if you don't say it quite the right way. So feel free to be a big personality and to really go all for it. And if you don't like it, you can always fix it later on. Along with that, here's tip number nine. Have fun and be yourself. You are going to stand out the most and you'll be the most natural if you just act like yourself. Be silly how you wanna be silly, share the facts that are interesting to you, even if they seem a little bit nerdy, and dive into the topics that are the most interesting to you, and show all your personality quirks. It is totally all right. Like I said, it's gonna help you to stand out more, it's gonna help you to be more comfortable, and the biggest thing that you want to avoid is blending into the crowd and being boring. So feel free to be the biggest, best version of yourself. And I also want to say, if you're an introvert and you're naturally a quiet person, that's okay too. And lean into that. The one thing I really want you to avoid is shyness. There's a difference between being an introvert and being introspective and being shy or timid. There's no reason to be shy with the camera. Like I said, you're going to be able to edit it later on. So don't be nervous, don't worry, embrace this, okay? And if, if quiet's your way, then be quiet and that's fine, but just be yourself. Now, the next tip is however animated you are naturally, I want you to step it up one notch, one level, okay? Take your normal hand motions, your normal gestures that you do, and just make them a little bit bigger. Because when you watch a video, when your viewers watch your video, it is going to flatten everything out. And you are going to find that because it's a two-dimensional thing that they're looking at, all of your gestures, all of your emotions, all of your body language becomes a lot more subdued. And so that's why you need to take it up a little bit so that it comes across as natural and normal and interesting on camera. Next, in order to make your presentation or your video as interesting as possible and to keep your viewers' attention, make sure that you infuse it with a lot of stories and examples. People don't tend to really enjoy having information just spewed at them and they are able to engage with the information much better and find it a lot more interesting when you include some examples and you explain why certain things are the way that they are. It helps people to make sense of it. So for example, 
example, one time when I was a kid and my mom was teaching me how to wash the dishes with the dishwasher, she showed me how to load it and then she showed me how to put the dish soap into the soap dispenser in the dishwasher. And she told me that it was very important that I did not get any dish soap, the kind that you wash dishes with in the sink, in the dishwasher. She told me that if I got even a little bit, then that soap made a lot more soap bubbles than the low suds dishwasher detergent, and it could fill the entire dishwasher up with soap suds, so much so that the entire dishwasher could overflow and could flood our kitchen. And when she told me this, she told me a story about a friend of hers who had done this who had put dish soap into her dishwasher and had flooded her kitchen. Now, I don't know how important it actually is to not put dish soap into your dishwasher. I do know that dishwasher detergent is the best kind and it is low suds and you don't want too many bubbles in your dishwasher. But I'm not sure if getting a little bit into the dishwasher would make my entire kitchen flood. But what I do know is that I've always remembered that advice that my mom gave me because she told me a story when she gave that advice. So if you are making videos, especially videos that are educational and not a story-driven video like a vlog or a video where you are doing a lot of things in the video, but where you're mostly explaining things to your viewer, make sure that you do include stories and examples to help your viewers understand your points better and remember them a lot better as well. And right along with that, we come to tip number 12, which is to show, don't tell. If you take one thing away from this video, I want this to be it. This is the biggest thing that can make your videos so much better. Instead of just telling people what they should do or telling them how something is or telling them what happened, show them what happened. Now, of course, the most obvious way to do this is by acting it out or by holding up a thing and showing them what it is, but there are many different ways you can show. First of all, you can paint a picture with words. So you can use a story or example to show instead of just tell. You can also do something like hold up a prop to show what you're talking about. You could act it out. You can also show B-roll, which is just additional clips that you add into your video. Maybe it's not you acting anything out, but just showing different objects or showing different scenes or showing different actions that relate to what you're talking about to help people to understand kind of the general idea. Any sort of visuals or word pictures you can include will make your videos a lot more interesting for people to watch. This next tip makes a lot of people squirm and for that reason, they don't do it. But doing this thing can make your videos so much better. And that is to watch yourself on camera. And yes, I know that this can be incredibly uncomfortable. And like I said, it makes a lot of people cringe. A lot of people hate watching themselves on camera, hate listening to themselves. So they don't do it. But watching yourself on camera can make your videos so much better. When you watch yourself on camera, you are going to notice a lot of things that you might never know that you were doing otherwise. You might notice that you are saying, um, a lot, or that you are leaning over to one side, or that your lighting is off, or that you are acting really nervous, or that you are sitting super still. Like I said, you'll never know until you do watch yourself. Now, if you are editing your own videos, this is pretty much going to be taken care of because you're going to be essentially forced to stare at yourself on video for a lot of hours. But I also wanna reassure you here that you don't need to worry that it's going to continue to be awkward to watch yourself on camera. You are going to get used to it. The main thing that makes it awkward to see yourself on camera is that you are very used to yourself in one sense. You're very used to being inside of yourself. And so seeing yourself in a different context is really weird. It's kind of like when you saw your third grade teacher in the grocery store and you didn't even recognize her. Well, the same thing is happening when you see yourself on camera and it takes a little while to get over that initial shock. But once you do, you will get really comfortable seeing yourself on camera and it won't really be any difficulty at all. Now, as you watch yourself, you're probably going to notice some things that you aren't completely happy with with your video. Again, maybe lighting, maybe how you're talking. It could be any number of things. So what I don't want you to do here is just get down on yourself and think, man, my videos aren't any good. Why aren't my videos as good as so-and-so's videos? I suck at this, I'm gonna quit YouTube. What I want you to do instead that is going to really 
really help you become better is that while it's good for you to notice all these different areas for improvement, I want you to pick just one to work on at a time. So you notice all these things, but just choose one that is easy to fix. And when you make your next video or you give your next presentation, make sure you fix that one thing. And the next time you make another video, work on fixing a different thing. And you can layer one fix on top of another, and over time your videos will become better and better. If you try to fix everything at once, you won't be able to, and you might not notice any improvement at all. So just pick one thing to fix. And finally, I know you saw this tip coming from the very beginning, practice, practice, practice. The more you talk on camera, the more comfortable you will get. The more presentations you give, the more comfortable and confident you will become. If you've just made three videos, you've just made 10 videos, and you're still feeling a bit awkward, uncomfortable, shy on camera, that's normal. Don't worry about it. We all start there. We all start out really awkward. And over time, we become more confident, more comfortable, and I like to think a little bit more skilled at it. So if you're just starting out, even if you're on video number 10 or 20, don't give up. Just keep pushing forward. Keep practicing. Keep making videos. Keep looking for areas to improve. And I know that very, very soon, sooner than you think, you will look back on your first videos and realize how far you've come. Thank you guys so much for joining me for today's video. I hope you really did enjoy this one. My name is Gillian Perkins, if we haven't met before, and welcome to my channel. If you are interested in entrepreneurship or in growing on YouTube, then be sure to click that subscribe button down below because those are the topics I talk about on my channel every single week. I make a new video every single Tuesday morning, and I would love to have you join me for the next one. So you can subscribe. You can also make sure to ring that bell because if you haven't heard, the YouTube algorithm has changed a bit and it doesn't really promote subscriptions to people anymore. It just promotes, you know, whatever you watched most recently, it'll promote to you more of that. But if you ring the bell, then you should get a notification. At least it seems like most people do. Um, you can also give this video a like if you did enjoy it and I would certainly appreciate that. Again, thank you guys so much for joining me and I'll see you again next week.